The foundations for the International Criminal Court, ICC, were established after the Cold War demonstrated the need for an international judicial body that could prosecute individuals for war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide. The institution headquartered in The Hague, Netherlands, currently has 123 member states. The states are party to the Rome Statute, which serves as both the court's governing document and its statement of intent. Since its establishment in 2002, the International Criminal Court ICC has heard 22 cases and indicted 36 individuals, all of them from Africa. Now in the midst of multiple ongoing ICC investigations in African countries, the continent has shot back. All members of the African Union, with the sole exception of Botswana, expressed their distrust in the institution during the 23rd Annual African Union Summit. Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni even threatened to put forward a motion to have all African countries withdraw from the court. Robert Mugabe, former chairman of the AU, echoed Museveni's sentiments by insisting that a mass pullout appear on the AU's next agenda. Although some leaders have claimed that an inherent bias against the continent has caused the ICC to unfairly target African nations for review, the debate is not so simple. In an exclusive interview with FTV News, Naka Lagoke, founder of the Revival of Pan-Africanism Forum, said the prosecutor of the ICC should not attempt to hoodwink the African people by blatantly dismissing the inadequacies of the International Criminal Court in its handling of African issues. During World War II, this is what I mentioned yesterday during my presentation, when they were doing the trial of Nuremberg, who questioned the rationale of American to drop two atomic bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. So this is the same thing. Who questions the crimes committed by France in Ivory Coast? Because they killed, they bombed hospitals, the presidential palace, they killed civilians. Who questions that in the name of what? Democracy? Mr. Water hasn't brought any democracy in Ivory Coast. Babo, of course, made many mistakes that I have denounced. He should have left power. But this does not give them the right to go and kill civilians in Ivory Coast. So this is a... Uh, this is what, but that's the perspective people need to see. So those who love so much, you know, the neoliberal understanding of the, of the world, you know, they, I think that some are, some have generally, you know, they believe it, that, you know, they're doing the right thing, and there are some who are dishonest, because the reality in Africa, we are still suffering from the neo-colonial interference, and we are still suffering from that neo-colonial dimension in African politics coming from the West, and this, no one can come and erase that. And this is what I said yesterday. My job is not to go and try and make the ICC better. My, my vision of my mission or whatever I'm doing on earth, it is so uh, complex. And then some, I'm, sometimes I'm overwhelmed to go and, and care about how to make the ICC better. I've been working with friends and peers, you know, to elevate the consciousness of our people, you know, to tell them that we need to be uh, to wake up and then to rise up and to organize so that we can reduce the influence of whatever instrument of that can be in the hands of neocolonialism. If it is the ICC, then it is the job for them to fix you know, their flaws if they think that what we are do, is saying or doing makes sense. The prosecutor Ben Suta yesterday said, you know, uh, uh, people, they talk about that the ISIS is not targeting Africans, but what are you going to say? But when you look at all the cases, most of are African cases. You want to convince who? That you're going to go after the United States of America. This is what I said yesterday. Either she's been deceived or she, she wants to deceive people, but she cannot fool us. She cannot bamboozle us. This is, this is the, the thing. He bemoaned the manner in which the ICC tackled the Ivorian situation, saying the arrest of former Ivorian President Laurent Gbagbo and the complete disregard for the wrongdoings of the Ouattara-led administration was unjust and defeats the purpose of the ICC. The ICC has some, uh, what can I say, some substantial flaws that are not racially driven. And then in the beginning, many people uh, will agree that the ICC was a very important institution because uh, 
its uh, duty uh, is you know, to stop victimizers and also to bring to justice you know, victimizers and also to bring justice to, to the victims. So we agree on that. But now in the implementation of its mission, then we see that the ICC is targeting most of Africans. Are we going to say that it is racially motivated or it is because like a journalist who worked at the International Criminal Court said that the ICC is a tool in the hands of the most powerful. Uh, you take, for instance, the Article 53, uh, which it talks about the discretionary power of the prosecutor of the ICC. This article says that it is the prosecutor who can decide whether or not to, you know, to prosecute an individual or to do some investigation on a particular case. So in the case of Ivory Coast, and I've been saying that all the controversy about the credibility of the ICC, the hallmark is the Ivorian crisis. Over there, they have decided two things. First, to do the sequential prosecution, to take Babo, Babo's wife and Babo's, uh, and Babo's youth leader, Blegoudé, but Babo's wife is she's run now in prison in Ivory Coast, and later on, then they, will, they, will, they think that when they have enough evidence, they will go after uh, Mr. Alassane Ouattara's camp. In doing so, there is a big problem because they did not gather enough evidence and they have already arrested Babo. And then they're going after Babo. And it has been already five years. So that, that the choice of a sequential prosecution is a problem. Coming back to Article 53, we see that it is the prosecutor who decides. And then uh, Mr. Mrs. Bensuda does not think right now that she has enough evidence, you know, to go after Mr. Watara's people. So I think that, that, the, that discretionary power given to the prosecutor in the way to initiate investigation, I think that this is a substantial flaw that is undermining whatever credibility the ICC can claim to have.